Okay, today uh, we will talk about the single phase diode rectifiers. I'm sure you have seen, you know, some of those uh, commercial uh, rectifiers. They are also called uh, bridge rectifiers. So you know, usually they have uh, four terminals, uh, two for the input and two for the output. And we can draw uh, the E. colon circuit of a single phase diode rectifier like with one, two, three, four diodes, and this is our input and usually the you know input voltage has some um, inductance due to the cable length and that kind of things but uh, we can ignore it for now and again at the output uh, we want to you know filter the output and usually a, a low pass filter like a capacitor or LC filter is used and this is where our load is connected it can be a resistive load or any other load that you want so Let's say for now our output voltage draws a constant current. So in other words, uh, you can assume the output is like a you know ideal uh, current source. So basically our circuit becomes like that. So in the in, uh, primary side we have the AC uh, voltage, AC supply, and then we have the you know four diodes connected like that in a bridge form, and this is our output. And actually that part models of both the capacitor and everything uh, just to simplify our calculations and actually we can uh, we can redraw the circuit like that and I'm sure you are familiar with that one so whenever that voltage is uh, positive so basically the current can flow through here and come back through that line so going through D1 and coming back from D2 and in the previous one so it is going from D1 and coming back to the source from D2. Okay. However, when it is uh, let's say negative, so the magnitude of Vs is negative, so it will not be possible to draw uh, current through D1. But basically, when it is negative, it want to go through D3 this time, and it is still positive on the source side, and it is coming back through the source like that so on the load side we basically have you know the current in the same direction however we can have a bidirectional current on the other one and in this case you know when if it is uh, negative voltage so basically it is going from d3 and coming back through d4 and making a loop like that okay so what about the input voltage? So can you calculate the average output voltage? So let's go back and you know remember that one is the uh, RMS value. So let's try to uh, plot our input voltage. So our input voltage will be a sinusoidal like that. And the peak value should be square root 2 Vs. Okay. So what do we see? at the output voltage. What is my output voltage? So basically, again, maybe it is uh, easier to see it here. Let me clean that part. So whenever, you know, whenever D1 and D2 are in conduction, so basically VD, if, let me write here, D1 and D2 are on so basically my vd voltage will be equal to my vs voltage because it is directly reflected here okay however if uh, let me use red color uh, if for example our input voltage is negative and it is going through that line you can see that negative side of our voltage is connected to the positive side so it is like you know inverse voltages so if uh, d3 and d4 are on so basically vd will be minus vs so it will be like reverse so if you go back uh, let me try to plot the output waveform with red color so whenever it is positive i will have that curve and whenever it is negative it will be reverse like that. So this will be my output voltage VD. 
Okay, so the peak is square root 2 Vs. It is the same. So how can you calculate the average voltage? So average voltage will be what would happen if you can represent all that thing like with an average DC value. Of course, it is not uh, DC, but uh, we are uh, calculate, estimating it like that. So for that, uh, let me try to, you know, again, we talk about it in the previous video. If you have a wave with like that, and if this is P, and that area, remember, that area was 2. So basically, in this time, I have not the magnitude of 1, but I have the magnitude of square 2 Vs. So basically, that area is, you know, 2 square root 2 Vs. Okay. And how many I have those things? I have one here and another here. So I am multiplying it another 2. And what is that period, the average period, this is 2p, this is p. Of course, you can take the average from here, it will be symmetrical. But anyway, let's divide it by 2p and that one and that one cancels. So if you can remember it from the early week, so it is 2 square root 2 divided by p. Okay, and what was that value? I have told you to remember it, it is 0. Uh, 0.9 Vs RMS. Okay, so basically, if you have a single phase rectifier like that, the output voltage will be uh, 0.9 uh, Vs. Okay, in other words, if it is connected to 230 volt RMS uh, supply, the VDC, average VDC, will be 0.9 times 230. I think it should be around 192 volts, something like that. Okay, but that calculation, you know, you calculate basically the area under that curve and you divide it over the period. Okay, so what about the input current waveform? So this was, you know, the red one was our input current waveform. So how can you plot the input current? So basically, uh, Input current, let me go back here and erase that part again. So uh, for you know this example, we assumed uh, to have the ideal current source. So basically the current here will be constant and it will be magnitude ID. So whenever, you know, whenever uh, D1 and D2 are on, so basically uh, IS will be equal to ID and in the other one basically IS will be equal to minus ID. So basically I'm drawing positive current when D1 and D2 are on and I'm drawing negative current uh, when D3 and D4 are on. So if I try to plot it here so basically what you will have for the input current okay you have input current small capital uh, yes so basically you have when the voltage is positive you are having a positive current so whenever you know you are getting into the negative voltage you are having a negative current so then this will be minus it so basically you are not drawing, I mean, this is because of the assumption of having an uh, ideal uh, current source, you are not drawing a sinusoidal current, but you are drawing a square current uh, from the input. So again, this is not uh, perfect, you don't want to draw uh, square waveform, because as we discussed in the previous video, this has, you know, many harmonics. Okay. And what about the THD of the input current? So basically we talk about that one. If you have a square waveform, yes, the fundamental, you will have a fundamental which is 
equal to in this case you know that will be slightly larger than that one so this will be 4 over pi times id but it will just be the fundamental then you have the third component fifth component etc so basically what you will have is you will have the peak value i mean this is shown as unity but let me say this is equal to 4 over pi times id and the third harmonic will be one third of that magnitude and fifth harmonic will be one fifth of that harmonic so it goes uh, like that let me go like that so basically the seventh harmonic will be one seventh and it goes like that and you just have you know just the odd harmonics not the even harmonics so actually uh, we talked it in the previous waveform so what was uh, the THD so THD you know can be written as the ratio of you know all harmonics the ratio of all harmonic square you know from n equal to to infinity and divided by the uh, RMS of the fundamental one or basically you can write uh, that like the total RMS squared minus the first harmonic of that one and divided by uh, the ratio of the first harmonic so basically if you remember again if this is one so the RMS if you square that one the that value will be one so it is basically one minus uh, four over pi four over pi is the uh, magnitude remember and I want to get the RMS so I need to divide it by square root two and that one is equal to 2 square root 2 divided by pi and this is 2 square root 2 divided by pi squared divided by uh, 2 square root 2 divided by pi and again if you remember that number we will use it quite a lot so it is 1 minus 0 0.9 squared square root divided by 0 0.9 okay and actually if you do that calculation if you do that calculation so it is equal to square root 2 you know 1 minus 0 0.81 is equal to 0 0.19 divided by 0 0.9 it is 0 0.484 or 48.4 percent of THT and actually it is well above uh, the limitations dictated by the standards usually you, you need to have like three five percent of THD so again this is like a rubbish input current you don't want to draw a square waveform uh, from the THD and you know that is why we are quite interested in the harmonics and we will talk about that uh, in the next video